coming up, the Mega Dance remix of I Could Eat a Knob at Night. Plus, of course, re Monkey News. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you've got any, any Monkey News, by the way, just, just email it in. Uh, what is it? Podcast it's at rickygervais.com. That's right. But don't be asking any questions about monkeys and that, because there's too many people asking about what's going on in the monkey world and that. And I can't, I can't do it to everyone. Well, you're gonna, you're gonna bring up what, any kind of big monkey information. If they need monkey to know that, I, I'll yeah. have it every week. But yeah. it's just that a lot of people, you know, they've got a taste for it. They want Talking to know of uh, monkey news, if you want to learn more about Carl, we've um, just put up a, a a big biography, and there's some pictures that you haven't seen before of uh, Carl Pilkington, and you can go to rickygervais.com mm. and check out the roundness of his head and you know, some of his stupid ideas. Yeah. But anyway, talking of emails and that, right? Uh, Nick Decker. Who's emailed from Australia, right? Melbourne. He's uh, he's he's been going on about dolphins and that problems with dolphins. What problems? Um, he's just saying when when that that wind happened. <laughs> um, what? There was like a bad wind thing going on. And Not was, your auntie Nora again. There was there was uh there was a load of dolphins in like a bay. Hold on, wait a minute. What what bad wind? Um, in in America. They had that... Hurricane Katrina? Yeah. Right. And there was like a little bay with dolphins in it. And right. Like with all guns on them and stuff. What do you, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Rewind. What they, do you mean Do you know how they use, they use dolphins, don't they? They say they're intelligent animal and stuff. Yeah. Um, and they've got them all like, you know, they've all had the training. They're all like ready for, for battle and stuff. Right. Got like rifles on them. What do you mean rifles? Got, how can they, they hold weapons. the rifle? They got, how can they got, hold the rifle? No, it's sort of on a strap and that. It's, what do you mean it's on a strap? I don't know what they cut them out with, but they're just ready for war. <laughs> what are you off. talking about? Listen, though, that isn't the point. Don't worry about it. Oh, we leave but that one, do we? Is, That's not the point. So let's leave it. So they're swimming about. And that, yeah, in this with with bay. rifles and berets. Whatever they've got on. Yeah, right? ready for for battle and stuff. Yeah, ready for uh, battle. Yeah. The wind comes in. The wind comes in. Hurricane Katrina makes makes a wave and that they get out of the little bay. Yeah, still all kitted out. With all the, you know, weapons You're talking that. bollocks. Steve, do you want to look at the email? Well, there, right? there's no way. There's loads of dolphins now swimming round, kitted out with problems. guns and that, with a strap. How, how can a dolphin hold a... Well, so again, they, you've been watching Planet of the Apes. They just, they just say, you know, you know, they say they're an intelligent animal and that. Yeah. People are trusting them. Right? Brilliant. Look, oh, here's a dolphin. Oh, he's trying to talk to us. What's he saying? He's saying, go ahead, punk, make my day. Look, You're just, talking shit. It's just news to say, if, if there's dolphins, you know, if you see a dolphin in that, don't go, oh, it's friendly, because there's some with weapons now. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just reading it out on email, that's, that, that'll cover it in that, so. Bollocks. And more, uh, <laughs> more animal stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, your girlfriend, yeah. Jane, right? When I was round there the other night, she was talking about, uh, they're getting closer to, to doing the, the mammoth. Oh yeah, they're they're genetically engineering it. They've um, they're a few sort of million bits and pieces away, but they reckon they're going to be able to build uh, a living mammoth within in two years. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Apparently, what sort yeah. of Jurassic Park type stuff? Sort of. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah. What do you think of that, Carl? Uh, do we need them? What do you mean? Well, is it worth messing about? Because I I always think well, whoever's like knocking one of these together, right? Yeah. They must be pretty bright. Right? Yeah. So whilst they're messing about with an airy elephant, is it? Could they be doing more useful stuff that the world needs? Well, it's sort of like you know, it's it's fascinating. Even if it, it, on the face of it, it looks pointless, which it rarely is. Scientific discovery, it, it, it's it's about conquering nature, isn't it? I mean, that's amazing, isn't it? That you could bring a mammoth back. What are the implications to bringing a mammoth back? You know, could could they aid the the, the workload? Could they feed? The starving, you know, it, it, there's, there's, there's what, applications. So you're, you're saying, well, I'm not bring saying it back anything. to kill it to eat it. Well, I'm, <laughs> not, <laughs> I'm not saying anything. I'm saying that rarely is scientific discovery pointless and a waste of time. In the in the greater scheme of things, we learn from this, don't we? The fact that it can map DNA of a mammoth. What are the implications there? Could we bring back, I don't know, um, Churchill? Could we bring back Nelson? Would we want to? Is it moral? That's another question. But. That the feet alone, and I don't mean its feet, I don't mean we can bring back mammoth feet. <laughs> I could feet. tell that was what he was thinking <laughs> when his eyes moved. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean the achievement alone is, is remarkable. Putting a man on the moon, pointless, but what a feat. Mm. But don't, don't you think... Not like, impressed by putting a man on the moon? No, we've chatted about the man on the moon, you know, some people like it, some don't. I'm not going to argue about it, do you know what I mean? If, if you were behind it and that, good on you, but... Yeah. I, I'm not that fussed. I don't think we've 
We've learned that much from it. He went all that way, popped a flag up, came back. What have we learned about that journey since? We haven't really been back. We conquered space. We just conquered space. That's what we do. We, we, we see what we can do. Why climb a mountain? Because it's there. What's well, at the bottom of the ocean? Yeah, but I don't agree with people who climb out in for the sake of it. It's all right if you've got to get over it. But don't don't go up and then go down again. No, Just I, go for I, a good walk. Well, I don't, I don't mind as long as they don't strain the emergency services. If you're a posh bloke going up the mountain in a beard and you get stuck, you're an idiot. Yeah. And then it's, you know, people have to risk their lives going to rescue you because you wanted to laugh. I agree with that, actually. But but don't you think the world's busy enough? It's like you can't, you can't hardly move. You know what I mean? <laughs> And mammoths are taking up quite a bit of room if a load of them come back. We've already got elephants, which in my eyes are good enough. They they do, you know, they carry stuff about and that. Yeah. What's what's <coughs> going to be better, a mammoth or an elephant? Because I, I can see that one of them's going to have to go at some point. If if like we start running out of elephants, would they would they say, well, it doesn't matter, we've got mammoths and stuff. So. What what's the point? You what don't need anyone else in the room for a conversation, do you? <laughs> no, no. But what, what he's argue? arguing with himself. He's arguing with his own head. Amazing. Where would you put the the mammoth if they get it if they get it going right? Yeah. They pop it on the give it the old electric shock and that wake it up and it, Frankenstein has been watching. And it's, yeah. and it's like, uh, all his information about science is about the Flintstones, Planet of the Apes, and Frankenstein. In his no. head, they've got they've got an elephant. They've sort of they've had they put some carpet tiles over it, yeah. and they're trying to bring that back to life as a mammoth. Yeah. Yeah, forget it then. <laughs> Carl, can we have some monkey news before I die? All right. Oh, chimpanzee! That monkey news, yeah. This week, what I thought I'd do, right? Because we're getting loads of emails from people who who haven't really heard much of the monkey news that I've done in the past, mm. right? And a lot of people are sending through one of the first ones that I did that that was a good monkey news. Yeah. Uh, I think it's worth hearing again, just in case you forgot about it, because it's, it's sort of classic monkey news. I don't know if you want a different jingle. Uh, well, no, I mean, it's just, you know, if, if it's anything that you've ever said, it's not true anyway, well, so carry on. Well, it was a true one, because this is the one that, like, it's it, this is like world-known monkey news. A lot of people will send this through, it's the most popular one, right? right? And it's about this uh, this monkey that was knocking about called Ollie. Right, it's called Oliver. Yeah. And uh, it was in this zoo, um, and, and it was the only monkey in there, right? So oh, this is the one they think was the missing link. It was half human, half ape. Uh, that programme on television, because it, it had bald out. It looked like you, which doesn't mean it's half it, anything. It might have been that one. What happened is it was in the zoo and stuff, and uh, it was getting a bit lonely, because like, it was sharing its sort of time with... Say an elephant and a giraffe and no, that. No, it doesn't happen. And they w they didn't really. No, no, no. Get whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. They do no, not. Let me put, just tell you. They do not, not put chimpanzees yeah, in with. You, no, well, it's not true. Why would you share his time with an elephant and a giraffe? Gervais, it was it was some kind of flat share. They put they put an advert in the student union. Yeah, you know we've got two rooms to let. African mammal wanted, not specific. A mammoth and a. What I'm saying is there was other elephants for elephants to knock about with than that. The monkey, it was the only one there. So what happened is the zookeeper. Right. Felt a bit sorry for him. Right. right. He was like, oh, look, he's looking all fed up and that. Yeah. And like you say, I think he went a bit bald because he was bored and that. So <laughs> he he started to sort of get pally with him. So at lunchtime, when the zookeeper was sat on the wall having his, like, hand butties or whatever, yeah. he'd sort of go, you all right? Yeah. And, and it used to come over closer and closer, right? Yeah. Anyway, within a month, he was sat on the wall having his lunch with him, right? And What's what wall? Just a little wall in the zoo. <laughs> so they let the monkey out. The monkey could come and go. Yeah, there's no door key. Just just near where the monkey is, it used to just pop. Oh, over. these blinking latchkey monkeys. He, I know. He, yeah, you know, he was twenty one. Yeah, go on. Sit there having his butty and that yeah. with the with the monkey and stuff. Yeah. And uh, anyway, the as, butty, as the... time as time went on, because the zookeeper back then zoos weren't as popular as they are now, oh. so it was only kind of it was him on his own really. So. He found like like the monkey was the closest rubbish. thing. Rubbish, absolute rubbish. The zoo can all run with one. This is a true thing. I mean, this it's is what not, I'm saying. A lot of people. The height of popularity for zoo surely was in the Victorian era. So yeah, exactly. Was, you're talking, anyway, carry yeah, on. But you're okay. being, you're sort of, you know, picking up on little things that aren't important. important. Sure. It doesn't matter. Yeah, but aren't anyway, true. so he sat, he sat there, and as time goes on, you know, yeah. he's, he's sort of sat with him most of the day. Monkeys yeah. walking around with him, helping feed the other animals and that. No. But then what happened is the the, the zookeeper at the end of the night when he's like locking up and stuff. Yeah. It'd feel bad because he'd be leaving the zoo and like Ollie's sat there and he's like, I'll see you tomorrow. And the monkey's like, Yeah, all right, see you later. <laughs> Looking all fed up because he's got home to go to and he's still stuck in his where he's basically working every day. Right? So he's, never, 
<laughs> he's never going home, right? Now he's sleeping at work, the so, monkey. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, the, yeah. the zookeeper goes home, says to his wife, look, Ollie's uh, having a bit of a time at the moment. So she said, oh yeah, what's going on? He said, well, uh, he's just looking a bit fed up, you know, he's, he's sick of it. So she said, bring him home. So he said, well, I did what I asked, but I didn't want to force it, you know. I'd, I'd like three this conversation pass. didn't happen. So anyway. <laughs> I love so he's giving it in such detail. Yeah, I know, it didn't happen. <laughs> so this anyway. is in your head. So so she said, yeah, bring it home tonight. So anyway, he's, he's looking forward to going into work and that. He sees Ollie. He doesn't tell him straight away. <laughs> <laughs> like it's a it's surprise. a surprise for him later. Oh, so, God. So they go through the day, you know, usual stuff, feeding elephants and all that. It gets to the point when it's like they have the lunch and that. It gets to the end of the day. Yeah. And... Uh, Sort of Ollie's there, he's looking at him like as if to say, well, there you go, another yeah, day, another sure. busy day and that. Um, Little does he know. See you tomorrow and stuff. Anyway, he's like, get your coat. He's like, what? Coat? Uh, what do you mean, get no, your no, coat? But, <laughs> whatever the equivalent is, right? <laughs> whatever you say to a monkey, it was kind of like, you know, you come in with me sort of thing. Yeah. Right. So he's going, oh, brilliant. Anyway, no, he's not! So what he do you mean he's going brilliant? He takes Look, it home, So he gets right? his hat and coat. <laughs> he gets his hat and coat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he... Can't believe he's left, right? He, yeah. goes, he goes back to the zookeeper's house. Everything's going well for about a week and a half. Right. right? Has he he's got his own room? He, he still goes, like, to work and stuff. To the zoo, yeah. To the zoo. He doesn't then, work there! And then he comes back to the zookeeper. <laughs> but anyway, what, what ended up happening is... So anyway, he, he's, he's back at the back at the house, and it's, it's going well for about a week and a half. Treating him really well. He's sat there... You know, he's having a brandy at night before he goes to bed. <laughs> Zookeeper noticed that when he took it back to work, it was kind of getting flashbacks of not having a good time in the zoo, right? So he was like, this isn't helping him out. He's happy when he's at home with the brandy and the fags and that. When he comes back here, he's starting to look a bit fed up. So he said to his wife, look, you're at home all day, right? Oh, I'm going to work, I'll leave it with you, right? Yeah. So Ollie stays at home. Yeah. Anyway, uh, as time oh, goes on... Yep. A little bit of trouble. Whilst the fella's busy at work, grafting, paying the bills and that for Ollie at home, Ollie starts getting a little bit cheeky, tries it on with a missus. <laughs> right. Whoa. Right. Well, how the, the does Carl. a monkey try it on with the missus? Are you talking so this, this shit? This is classic monkey news. And how does it try it on with so the missus? So he's a bit drunk, he, he, he stinks of smoke. He tries it on with the missus. How does he try it on with her? It's, I, I don't know all the detail on You don't on know any bit. of the details. I don't know the detail on that bit. But you don't know, know any of the details. No, I don't know the details on that bit. You don't know, know any of the details. So what happened? So while the zookeeper's away, the monkey did play, <laughs> what happened? Did the, did, the, did, the, what, did the zookeeper's wife reciprocate these affections? Just a little bit of, like, you know, a little bit of little bit of fun, I suppose. She probably went along with that at first. You know, she's cooking at home, getting the tea ready. That's walking past, pinching her ass or whatever. <laughs> And it's, do you know what I mean? It's, it, it starts off just like it does, you know, with humans. Starts off as a bit of fun. Before you know it, you know, split up in the end. Anyway, the zookeeper and the what's it? I think the monkey stayed stayed with the with the woman. Like. <laughs> so, it's all there. It's Honestly, all on email, mate. You, it, the fa your imagination. Well, you should write stories. You get should people, write. You get know. people to look it up. It's look, just put in monkey, chimp, Ollie, and it's it's all there. Happy New Year, particularly. To those great guys at Positive Internet for oh. hosting this podcast. Dynamite. The world's number one podcast, thanks to the guys at Positive Internet. So, check out rickygervais.com to check out Carl's Head. You know, go and buy extras and flannels. <laughs> check it out on flannels.com. Oh, come on, this is shameless. Um, extras still available. Fridge freezer for sale, <laughs> £400 or nearest offer. Uh... Steve Merchant wishing you a happy new year. I'm sure Carl Pilgrim wants to reciprocate that. Yeah. Yep. And I, 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 do you know what I want to wish him? I want to wish them a fantastic new year.
Welcome to the sixth podcast in a series of 12, the Ricky Gervais Show, available online with me, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Hello. and Carl Pilkington. All right. Halfway through after this then, Carl. Yeah. You enjoying it? It's all right, isn't it? It's had a great response. Yeah. We're the number one podcast in the world. We've had uh, thousands of emails and messages, and it's just great to know that people all around the world are listening, don't you think? Yeah. It's great, isn't it? I should just point out, Rick, that we've had a few emails, including one from Mark Pavlidis, that says that some of the people listening on the enhanced podcast, so, you know, these, these fancy people, super rich people who can afford that one, apparently sometimes if they try to pause the show halfway through, um, it, it sort of freezes and they've got a problem restarting it. And he's saying that apparently you should, you should just hold down menu and select and that'll reboot it. So I don't know if you have had that problem. Hold on. Who's pausing? This show halfway through. I don't understand it. I can't believe it. This is like a book that you can't put down. What have they got that is better to do I don't with their know. time? I, uh, you know, uh, uh, what can be better to listening to Carl's drivel and his stupid theories? Unbelievable. We've got a, a little email straight away, Carl, from Nikki in Beverly Hills, California. She says, Carl, you rock. I hate it when Ricky and Steve ridicule you. I checked out your picture on rickygervais.com. Although your head is not normal, mm. that's no reason to ridicule you. You look gimp, but I never judge a book by the cover. Cheers. <laughs> is that all you've got to say? Well, it's only because I've, I've got no hair, though, isn't it? That's why it gives that effect. No, it's perfectly round your head. <laughs> Perfectly spherical head. Your face is slightly too big for it. It always goes over the, almost goes over the sides. Perfectly round head. Um, pug little nose. Funny gimp eyes with no expression. Mm. Hangdog look. Um, like a little mouth, like a little lamprey. Not formed, like human formed. The, the way your expression it, it is like you've had a lobotomy. Your head goes weird at the back. It's got a little nod in it. Like a, 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 a it's, it's really strange, your face. And you're stupid. We've had a lot of emails saying that. <laughs> I mean, I think he's just paraphrasing, but... Um, talking of emails, you know, uh, a couple of... I, don't, I can't remember which show it was, but you mentioned, Carl, that you'd, uh, you'd only recently seen a uh, Chinese homeless person. Oh, yeah. And it really surprised you, because you'd never seen I've a never Chinese seen homeless before, person. No. And I actually went along with that. I, I, I've never... I've still never seen a Chinese homeless person. Well, that's... Other than, obviously, people contributing monkey news, the uh, the search for Chinese homeless people has been an has been overwhelming on the on the email. People are just, I mean, people are actually going out looking for Chinese homeless people. Now, I can just tell you now that there's a f few responses from Los Angeles, people saying there are quite a lot of Chinese homeless people over there because apparently there's a huge homeless community in uh, in Los Angeles. So definitely if you want to see them, Carl, that's the place to go. Mm -hmm. But um, we've had one from Vancouver, Canada, from a girl called Amy, and Amy herself is Chinese, and she says that she realised herself that she, she'd never really seen a Chinese homeless person. Mm -hmm. And although she says that um, apparently Vancouver has the first or second largest Chinese population in Canada, she'd never seen them, and she actually went for a walk around uh, the Chinatown in her area right. looking for them, and she could not find any on that particular day. So, um, again, Canada, obviously not a place to go for a Chinese yeah, homeless. It, it was just a point, though. I don't want people sort of... Well, hold on, though. Wait, I'll stop you there. Hello, Ricky, Steve and Carl. I live in New York City and have seen a Chinese homeless person. Not only is he Chinese, but he is also a midget. He's been living on the streets for the last 30 years. He used to dress in rags, but thanks to a, a, a coat drive, he's now wearing a fancy Adidas jacket, right? Now he encloses a picture. Uh, he says he gave him ten bucks to take the picture, um, and I've seen it, and he's a little yeah, Chinese I, I, midget fellow. I'm just getting a bit worried that people are going out there sort of looking for these. Because, well, it, because the, you well, know, that's what you requested. No, 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 but all I was saying is I saw one. I didn't start saying, excuse me, can you just give us a smile? I'm taking your picture. <laughs> You know well, we've I mean? had loads of pictures of people. I know, and it worries me a little bit. And it, I mean, it's not too bad about the one who took one of the little midget one, because, you know, he's, if he kicked off, it'd be quite easy to sort of hold him back. 
But I'm talking about fully grown. So is that your warning to people? Don't be taking pictures of fully grown Chinese homeless. Well, yeah, I'm just saying, you know, don't don't be messing about going up to strangers and that and, and annoying them and stuff, right? Maybe well, not. I think that's a good rule of thumb. Don't annoy them. Um, but I mean, but that is a hell of a sighting, isn't it? We asked for a Chinese homeless, and they gave us a Chinese midget homeless. Many of the listeners are aware, Carl, that you're sort of fascinated by by smaller people. Um, well, he's fascinated by difference. I think. Yes. Oh. I don't think he's having a go at people. You know, I mean, when, when you when you when you sort of stare at someone because they don't look like you, and let's face it, most people don't look like you. You're not having a go, are you? Well, like you I say, first time I saw Steve, I was never never having a go. It was just, oh, that's different. <laughs> But, but, you know, like, you, you know, Steve, I was never having a go. It's it's just that yeah. thing of, oh, all right, interesting. What do you mean? No, just, just you know, we've, I've said before about when I saw yeah. Steve and what have you, and now I've got used to it, and... Steve got same. used to it? What do you... What you don't know, well, I, you know my feeling with this. I don't, I don't really know where but, he's coming but from. But Steve knows I'm not having a go either. Yeah. Carl used to carry around a book that was called the top 50 freaks of all time. Well, it's interesting you should mention that because we actually had an email from Richie who says that he's, he's been a fan of ours for many years and he's listened to lots of the radio shows you've done in the past and things. And he says, of all the people you've discussed, Carl, in the past, including some of the people from your, uh, your you know, odd magazines, who would you most like to spend the day with of all those people that you've encountered? Um, favourite... Favourite of all? Well, certainly who you'd want to spend time with, who you feel would be the most fascinating, the most interesting... You know, I mean, let's ju just recap on well, some of the- Well, Pillow Man, the bloke with no arms, no legs, that can, um, uh, roll a cigarette with his mouth. Yeah. No? Not impressed with him. <laughs> That's not sufficient. What about the three-legged juggler? So, hang on, let's just recap for, for new listeners. This was a man with three legs? Three legs, right. right. And, uh, it said his job, he became a juggler. Okay. Not using the, you know, the, the <laughs> gift that <laughs> he'd been given. What would you put into, what you suggest? Well, anything. Running. <laughs> swimmer. Uh, <laughs> just- you know, yeah. uh, but yeah, what, what are the there? others, what are the other ones? There was a picture of a gentleman, you were fascinated by him, he used to play the piano. Oh, he's got a tiny oh, head, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, that's that, um, that's the one who, uh, he, he sort of ages fast. Right. So, like, every other week he's having a birthday and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, that was weird. <laughs> he's not having a birthday every other week. His body's just aged, so it has the it has the appearance, uh, the, the his biology is sort of like like he's seventy, but he's only like fifteen. He doesn't. They don't have a birthday every <laughs> week. <laughs> you idiot. But yeah, I don't know about knocking about with one a long time though. That's only for a day. Yeah. Um. I suppose it depends what I'm up to. <laughs> <laughs> because if you know, if we're going out and about, the pillow man would just be a bit of a drag. Whereas, <laughs> whereas if you know, if you're going for a, a, a walk, walk across, you know, the three-legged guy, <laughs> ideal. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Lots and lots of people emailing just with questions for Carl. People just want to get his opinion on stuff. Mm -hmm. So if you have questions for Carl, keep them coming in. Podcast at rickygervais.com. We can't really reply to your emails, but um, we do read them, so we really appreciate them coming in. Um, just a couple of quick ones for you, Carl. Wendy says, if Carl had to eat the same dinner every day for the rest of his life, what would uh, what would he eat? She's, she mentioned this because she was having Christmas dinner and, and it was a big, you know, she loves Christmas dinner. Uh, it's the, the trouble with Christmas dinner. I mean, the roast dinner is the king of dinners and the Christmas dinner is the king of roast dinners. Yes. But <laughs> you can't have one every day. No, it's absurd. But they're, they're, it's brilliant. We it's, have three meats in our house. It's unbelievable. The yeah. amount of meats yeah. is, is just, just amazing. It just, it's a, just a plate of meat. <laughs> it's just meat, With yeah. one Brussels sprout, one yeah. token Brussels sprout and the gravy. Oh. Um... You see, it depends, doesn't it? I, I, I mainly eat just so I keep going. I'm not that bothered about because I don't really taste it anyway. I just shove it down. <laughs> you're like a what? A you're dog. like a horse. But at what point did it become important that things were sort of, you know, seasoned or garnished to go with it and stuff? At the end of the day, we're all eating, aren't yeah. we? So you can move about and that, and you've got energy. Well, we need to know what we're tasting, don't we? Because we need to have certain things. We need sugar. We need salt. We, uh, so we need to know what they taste like to know we're getting them. No, you, your body now we've got them. chefs, so leave that up to them to make sure. But, we're but getting I thought them you salt. were talking about an evolutionary standpoint and how it evolved. Not there was a little Do you chef. Think that's in likely. The... <laughs> no, but <laughs> leave it for them to make sure you know we're getting safe food. Um, I mean, to be honest, it annoys me the way people worry about food now and how how there's so much to choose from. I think it's got out of hand. <laughs> I watch any form of choice really worries you, doesn't it? No, you don't just, like choice. It, no, choice is good, but not too much. It's like with anything now. If you go into a, a toffee shop, 
There's like loads Sorry. of different. <laughs> Where are you going to find a toffee so shop? You're in a, you're in a, you're in a fairy tale. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah, yeah. You're, you're in a Dickens tale yeah. in the, uh, in the nineteenth century. You're in Shrek. And yeah, you... yeah, yeah. You go into a toffee no, shop. No, what are you what's talking your point? You go into a toffee, toffee shop. shop. What I'm saying, you <laughs> yeah. know, what you go into a shop full of toffee. You've just come from stuff. the candlestick maker. <laughs> Right? You go, you go, oh, you go in there, and there's just too much choice. It's like what, and I, I can stand there up to like four minutes, sort of going <laughs> up to know. four minutes. <laughs> so specific. That's four minutes. So he's in a toffee shop in a top hat. Well, he's only got going, four, he's only got four minutes because he's got to get down to the pea green boat. <laughs> That he's saying yeah. No, but, but, but forget the toffees. Can I have right? some of your finest Oxfordshire toffees? But so you'd prefer it was just one selection of toffee? That's all they've got. Well, maybe two. <laughs> what I'm saying is right. There's now too much choice. Whenever you get a menu in a restaurant, it's not like you don't just go, oh, right, what is the? Yeah, I'll have that. There's too much. It's like a book now, isn't it? And you look <laughs> at it all. And then you've got to that point now that people are even taking a risk when they're eating. What do you mean? Um, you know, in, in Japan or China or something, they're eating that fish. <laughs> that if it's not cooked right, it can kill you. Right? Yeah. Not yeah. worth the risk when there's so many other fish. Yeah, I agree. Why do, why have are mackerel, they... have a bit of cod or whatever. <laughs> yeah, as soon as there's a risk, risk yeah. take it off. Take it off I agree. Menu. I totally agree. Not worth what, it. What, uh, we've got a fish that might or might not kill you. Well, um, is there anything that definitely won't kill you? Yeah, a bit of chicken won't kill you. Right. I'll play safe then. I love that. I love that. I love the chicken. That's what I'm saying. But anyway, we were talking about <laughs> sayings and that. <laughs> um, stitching time saves nine. Don't don't. You know, I'm never going to use that, I don't think, anyway. So, <laughs> okay. Suzanne You're never going to understand it fully, are well, you? Suzanne repairs me stuff anyway. It, <laughs> so it doesn't, doesn't really matter. But what about the one, um, about the one in, in greenhouses and that? People who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Yeah. What do you, what is that? Does that confuse you? You've never understood that one? No, that's, that's a lot clearer, isn't it? It's sort of saying, don't be chucking stuff about if you're surrounded by glass and what have you. Yeah, but don't forget, it, it's an analogy, it's a metaphor, it, it's not to be taken literally. It's not really just talking to people who live in glass houses. It's saying, uh... uh Hang um, on, sorry, before you say that, Rick, I just, I'm intrigued to know if he's fully got to grips with this. Okay. Just give us your explanation again of what you'd take that to mean. Well, just don't be chucking stuff about, really. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> well, if that was it, they'd just say no, no, that. No, no, but, but that saying's been around a lot longer than we think. That's when people probably did live in... Basic glass houses and stuff. No, no, whoa, 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 no, they don't. You're saying don't chuck stuff about because no, you break don't, it. No, it's not about uh, damaging your own property. They don't mean you're inside the glass house throwing rocks inside your own glass it's house. It's a metaphor. It means don't be having a go at people if you yourself have got uh, uh, more to lose. Do you know what I mean? It, it means it, it. It could be. It could be anything. Don't don't start a war where you could come off bad as well. It's about how fragile your situation is. If you live in a glass house, metaphorically. Don't throw stones at someone else, because when he throws it back at you, your house is more easily damaged than his. It Again, metaphorically. It doesn't mean that if you're living in a glass house, or in a house with other precious objects, you don't, in your own home, throw bricks about. Because that would be a very specific audience that I was trying to reach, that phrase. I mean, let's be honest, I what could, kind of a mental Do you know case? what, I think we've got the crux to this, right? I, I think I can answer, right, right. Carl, what... Is an analogy. Uh, it's sort of like a little story told quickly, <laughs> isn't it? It's it a is, little story it? told quickly. Right. To what end? Well, it depends what the story is. Depends. Okay. Give me a give me an analogy. Well, for me, I thought a one with the greenhouse. Yeah. Right. Um, it's no, it's a greenhouse. It, before it was just a glass <laughs> house. Yeah. Yeah. All right, then a glass house. Okay. All right. You, do, do what I mean is that glass house is metaphorical. <laughs> it's about the fragility of your situation as compared to your aggression or your... You see, uh, I, I just prefer sort of, you know, what you say is what you mean. So people in who live in a glass house have to answer the door 
I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I mean, because, you, you, because you may be a genius, because I don't get that. People who live in glass houses have to answer the door. Okay, because, let him, let's hear his explanation. Because the people knocking at the door will be able to see you, because it's a glass house. But what, eh? But you literally mean, don't you? There's no analogy there or metaphor for you. You literally mean, if you live in a glass house you and someone knocks the door. the door. So there's no, there's no hidden meaning there, is there? Well, no. Couldn't that also? You don't. But you have to add a number of other things. Uh, another ca other caveats. Surely, if you live in a glass house, don't walk around naked. Yeah. If you live in it, a... <laughs> these are literal. See, if you now you could make you could actually make that into quite a nice uh, um, uh, uh, saying there because if that meant if someone said that to me and they weren't a shaved chimp, right? <laughs> if they said people who live in glass houses have to answer the door, I think that means oh yeah, it means that um, there are no secrets you can't hide behind. Anything. If you're if you're very open, if you've chosen to be totally open all the time, you can't go back on it. So people, if you wear everything on your sleeve, if you shout around and you tell the truth, and uh, you can't go back on it. They can see they can see through yeah, you. You can mean that as well, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that's handy. But just the idea that in your head there are you need that there should be sayings for people who live in glass houses. Who is it that's living in a glass no. house? Well, it, I, I'm not talking about it. It's just that if everyone else is bringing up about these people who are living in glass houses, let's let's get to the real problems they've got. <laughs> <laughs> it still hasn't got to grips with the idea of the no, metaphor or the simile. People who live in glass houses should live near a glazier. Right. Well, here's another saying, right, that I, that I learnt recently from a mate, right? Um, well, there's an elephant in the room. <laughs> okay, I, don't, I haven't heard that one, but explain it to me. It's like um, when you when something's going on in a room, right? But no one's mentioning it because everyone's a bit too sort of. But in a way, it's better that it's out. It's like how you know you whenever we go out for something to eat or a drink or something, mm. it's normally after about five minutes the sort of topic gets onto the shape of my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, right? I can't resist the shape of your head. Right, so you're you're happy it's talking about it. It's not just the shape, though, is it? It's the state of it as no, well. What I'm, what Outside and in. But I mean, it's a fascinating <laughs> little objet d'art, <laughs> his what, head. But what I'm it's re perfectly round. Uh, it's got no hair where it should have. Um, and it's well, hollow. <laughs> <laughs> the features are slightly too small for the face. Yeah, no, unbelievable. No, but what I'm saying is, it's interesting <laughs> now, like, I'm the elephant in the room, right? Nobody's talking about it. You mention it once, suddenly it's a talk of the town. <laughs> it's, it's what I mean, everybody starts joining in going, well, yeah, it is round, but it does suit you. And these are people who I don't even know sometimes, and they're all dipping in. And that is an elephant in the room. Um, so you you don't want people to discuss the shape of your head or the, or the lack of hair? You um, would feel better, you would feel happier that they didn't mention that? Sometimes I think it's better that it's out there. It's made me a stronger person, though. It's the same way, you know, we are talking about religion and that. Samson Delilah, yeah. he got weaker without air, mm. whereas with me, I think it's it's made me stronger, because, you know, it's almost like it's treated like a disability. Everybody's sort of mentioning it and talking about it. What's it like having a bald head and, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's made me stronger. But would you ever wear a wig? Um, not really. What I was mean, a long wig like Samson? Well, the only time I wanted a wig was when I did jury duty once, right? And it was annoying that I was sat on the jury, right in front of, like, these criminals, right? Everybody else has got disguises. The judges have them wigs on, right? <laughs> that's not disguises! It is a disguise. That's a disguise. That's why judges wear them, right? So no! Not... Well, then why did they print their name in the paper and have a picture of it? What do you mean it's a disguise? Well, it's a disguise, isn't no, it? No! If it was a disguise, they'd go in with one of those um, glasses with a nose and the beard attached if it was a disguise. All judges would look like Groucho Marx if it was a disguise. Well, that, I'm just saying that's that's what annoyed me when I was sat there on the front row, right? I couldn't have been any closer to the criminals, right? <laughs> right? I was sat there and I thought, why didn't I just pop a little wig on or a pair of glasses? <laughs> In the front row at Crown Court. No, because I love to see it because uh, in this country you're not allowed to show pictures of jurors. Uh, you can't take photos <laughs> in a courtroom, so there's always these sketch artists that draw drawings, and it's on the news. The idea that we'd have seen eleven people and a sort of crusty the clown figure would have been amazing. Yeah, uh, oh, I would love to see the uh, the artist do an interview because it would be like complicated people. Oh, hey, he looks a little character for, and then just a little round head. Charlie Brown. <laughs> Charlie Brown sitting on the end. <laughs> Carl, you said that your New Year's resolution was that you were going to learn something every day. Yeah, Have you learned anything today? If, if I can. Uh, today, like, 
I don't know the full facts of it, but... Could I just say that when someone says they learn something new every day, that doesn't count if they forget it the next day? <laughs> no, Because no, that would be Groundhog Day learning. Well, the thing I learned today was about an octopus. Oh, Go yeah. on. What they can do is, um, you know, they've got eight legs and that. Yeah, They can, yeah. they, they can use, they can <laughs> use six of them legs to cover their head so they look like a little stone. We use the other two to run off. <laughs> right? But that's he's, think, he's thinking of Squidly Diddy. Yeah, it's a Disney image in his yeah, head, isn't he's it? Thinking no, but, pink. A, but uh, anyway, uh, but, but anyway, that's that's you know. So that's it's not pink the main singing thing. a song in your mind. <laughs> I'm running off. Yeah. No, but anyway, but something else I learnt, right? Um, it's it's mainly about animals and that because that's yeah. normally quite interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's a chicken somewhere. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And Specific. The, and the owner of it was getting fed up because. <laughs> You know, we had to feed it and that, but it wasn't... Embellishment, embellishment, it wasn't, it guesswork. Wasn't, no, come on, let's hear it. It yes. wasn't giving anything back. No eggs. No eggs, right? So he was like, oh, I'm sick of this. Anyway, someone told him, pop a little axe next to its little house, right? So when it comes out in the morning, thinking, oh, I'll have another lazy day doing nothing, right? <laughs> he saw this axe, and suddenly it was like, oh, all right, right? I'm next day, it, thought, yeah. it laid about six eggs. It's rubbish. Through it's rubbish. Through the, the chicken wouldn't recognise an axe as a threat. It wouldn't. It wouldn't be able to reason that. Oh, um, I better start working, or I'll be. I'll be meat. I better. Start. It's absolute rubbish. Once again, it's this ridiculous thing you got that that one personifying animals uh, to, to 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 reasoning powers better than yours. I mean, I think, you know, you, you, you make chickens and monkeys cleverer than you in your stories, which is weird, okay? It didn't happen and wouldn't work. Next! What, <laughs> what else haven't you learnt today? No, well, as always, things like that always get me thinking. What right? else haven't you learnt today? No, he's got his, no, his mind's working now. This Go apparently on. has got his yeah, mind so working. that's rubbish. Well, do you think, then, that it's worth looking after animals, then, if, if there isn't any memory? If they don't know what's happening anyway... You're always going on about don't be cruel to things. Yeah, why would you be cruel? For, there's one thing uh, about imagining chickens can reason, and because they can't be cruel to them. Why does it matter whether an animal can reason or not for you not to be cruel to it? The reason I don't like blood sports isn't the fact that there's a fox missing. It's the, it's the psychology of the people that get off on seeing an animal ripped to pieces. They wouldn't like it if it was a robot. They wouldn't care. They, that, for some reason, in their psychology, they like, they like this sport. Why does it have to be a sport? They're not culling. They're not putting things down for a good... They like to see this no, no, fox but, ripped uh, apart or a bull tortured for their own pleasure. But, That's why you should why would you ever want to be cruel to an animal, whether it can reason or not? No, no, no. I mean, I don't mean really cruel, but I mean like, like there's an advert on that's that's on in the you know in Britain, advertising some supermarket, right? And it's saying, you know, we look at before you know we kill our chickens and what have you, they have a great life. This is yeah. like the voiceover, and you see happy chicken, yeah, and it's going, uh, we give it a good little house to live in. It's got straw, yeah, it eats good, yeah, and then we kill it. Right. Yes, well, that's better, isn't it? Well, no, I don't think it is, though, is it? Because at the end of the day, if I was that chicken, right, <laughs> I'm that chicken, loving my life, I can't believe me luck, right? Well, we'd be pleased, because we, at least he'd be able to do the show, and we'd have so, some interesting conversations. Yeah. So, there it is, right, wandering about, it's got its nice little field that it's working on, yeah. it's got its nice food and everything, but it's going to die. Yeah, we're all going to die. But then, if you were like a rubbish chicken, that had like a rubbish life, you'd be going, oh, kill me. Go! <laughs> <laughs> they're not thinking what's going to happen tomorrow. They don't know that they're going to get they're going to get for the chop, are they? A chicken's not going, I am fed up with this, I can't wait for that axe to be used on my neck. Yeah. Well, that that's another th Now you've mentioned the cutting off of an head, right? Yeah. On a chicken. That's something else I've learned, right? It's like a pinball is mine. Amazing. Isn't it? Ding dong, bong dang, ding ding da da, oh, head, ding ding, chicken, ding ding ding, ding head off, bing dong. No, no, right, but um, this was in a proper science magazine as well. Right? Yeah. So you can't have a go. This wasn't something on the internet. This was printed in a so, magazine. So, you read it. Okay, and what was it? And here, it? And here comes the filter. It's going to come out nonsense. Right. Well, you could have Professor Stephen Hawking sitting there whispering stuff in your ear. And it could all be true, but when you said it, gobbledygook. <laughs> well, let's see then. Let's see, right? This, what they've done, they've done another experiment, right? Yeah. They've cut somebody's head off, right? <laughs> and you know how they used to do it in the olden days, where they'd put your head in a stock, cut it off for whatever reason, right? You've done something wrong, right? Yeah. And the question that everybody used to talk about in the village was, you know, oh, I made eye contact with it, right? And it was a bit worrying because he was looking at me and... He looked fed up and that. Right? No, he's dead. 
So they've put a bit of work into this, and they've they've done it again somewhere, right? And they've worked out that once when when the head comes off the body, yeah. it stays alive in that no. for thirty seconds. Well, no, they they don't know that. They can never know that. No, they did it. They did this no. experiment. What's alive? The What's head. alive? But the, what, yeah, no, it, 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 there's loads of issues here. One, no one's experimenting with human beings cutting their head off, Carl. Well, two, mm. no, 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 no. So you read no. this in what? Executioner's Monthly. This yeah. is in no a two, proper... Carl. It's what your definition of, of alive is, because you can be alive and have no conscience. No, no, but this is this is where it gets weird, right? Yeah, it's where, where, this is where it gets weird. <laughs> you talking about it? So the head's off, right? Yeah. And what they did was they chucked a load of questions at it. <laughs> <laughs> All sanctioned by the government. Yeah, this is yeah. all fine. So the head, the head lands perfectly on the neck and goes, <coughs> what do you want to know? And it said, it said, so they're asking questions and it's going, do you know what? To be quite honest, I'll answer, answer your question. I'm a little bit annoyed about the execution still. Well, that that was the interesting thing. They said it's about... No, it's not. It didn't happen, Carl. Let me hear it. Oh, don't talk Let shit. me hear it. What are you talking about? Who, who these people around in white coats going, quick, ask it a question. It's bleeding. Right. So they said for about 25 to 30 seconds, the last five seconds, it is sort of like, can't be bothered answering them. <laughs> Right, but apart from that, but apart, that. From, oh, but apart from that, they, oh. were, they were chucking stuff. I don't think it spoke. I don't think it was like, yeah, two and two, four and stuff. It was more, um, it was to do with blinking. So blink once if you say oh, yes, yeah. blink twice. So, so I told it, I said, listen, when you die, you're probably not going to be able to talk because your jaw's going to be on the ground. You're not going to be able to open your mouth. If you do, you'll fall over backwards and hit your head. Now listen, blink one for yes and two for what? no. Yeah, right, yeah, not too bad. Yeah, is the axe nice and sharp? Yeah, promise, you're you talking promise? shit again. <laughs> you promise to do it? Yes. All yeah, right. well, yeah, yeah. The thing is, they wouldn't be able to do it with you, because if they cut your head off, it would just roll. It would roll away, because it's perfectly spherical. They would go, oh, no, there's Plus, no... Plus, oh. it takes about 20 seconds, whenever you ask Carl anything, for the <laughs> yeah. question to process, <laughs> and for him to start to formulate an answer. Anyway, if, you know, if you've, if people listening and that, if they learn anything that's amazing, yeah. send it in, because, you know... Because it'll come out gobbledygook when uh, Carl tries to translate it. Interesting facts is what we're after then. Plus, also, if you've got any questions for Carl, if you just want to see how his mind works, um, then you can get in touch with or us. Or whether his mind works. Indeed. We've any doctors, that. psychologists out there. Podcast at rickygervais.com. Yeah. That's how to get in touch. Carl, it's what we've all been waiting for. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. All right, well, this one, sent in from, uh, from Sam in New York, right? And it's about a fire that happened, right, in a really... Do you know, like, in New York, they have loads of big buildings, don't they? Mm -hmm. Right, really, really tall ones and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And um, there was a fire in one of them, right? So they did as expected. They called up, you know, fire brigade and that. They turned up, right? Uh, fire engine parked up. It's like, right, where's the fire? And they said, oh, it's on, like, uh, floor 100 or whatever. And they said, oh, no... We've brought the fire engine with the short ladders. <laughs> Stupid mistake, but go on. Right. So anyway, so the fire's going and that, and they're saying, is there anyone in there? They go, I, I don't know, there might be someone up there, but, we, you know, the telecom's not working and stuff. Who do you think might be up there, Rick? I don't know. But who's Just a woman, I imagine, just a woman or a child. Well, is, there a, is, there a, is there a fireman that could climb up a building <laughs> okay. at all without a ladder? That seems unlikely, but go on. Go on. So anyway, so they said, well, how are we going to get up there? Yeah. Yeah. Right. We can't. But they've only brought the short ladders. No, we can't. Let's go home. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll that was uh, monkey news. So, uh, so they said, well, there's a lot of, like, grippage. Because <laughs> they, they made up words, the uh, fireman, yeah, the NYPD <laughs> fireman. There's a lot of grippage! On the yeah. side of the building uh, and stuff. <laughs> so anyway, they said, why don't we just go and get a monkey, right? So they oh. got they got Whoa, a monkey. Whoa, yeah, that's a bit that, of a jump. Is they that just... policy now in, uh, in in the New York Fire Department? Well, the, you know, you've got to think quick, haven't you? At the end of the day, if people are up there, you don't yeah. you don't start querying if it works or not. You try everything that, that you can to, yeah. to help someone out, right? That's the first thing I thought of. Was it a monkey? So it was quicker for them to go and get a monkey than to go back and get the long ladders. Why don't they get Spider-Man? Okay, <laughs> <fair enough. laughs> Why don't they get Spider-Man? <laughs> yeah, cool Spider-Man. Yeah, cool Spider-Man. So anyway, so they got they got a monkey down there, and they said, right, where well, they get it from? We don't know from the locals who wasn't. Oh there. yeah, yeah. So they said, look. Let's, uh, you know, we've got to remember there's, there could be someone up there, um, right. and it'll shock them a bit if, <laughs> if, if, a monkey looking, if a monkey comes in, right? Yeah. So they said, <laughs> Yeah, I don't think they'd care. Get it their, their building's on fire, they're not going to yeah. go, oh, That's weird, there's a monkey at the window. <laughs> they'd be screaming, <laughs> Save me! Oh, there's a monkey. Oh, so, anyway, from them. so they said, Right, we'll just get it a little small uniform and that, as far as you've got. <laughs> but, whoa, hold on, though. Actually, where are you going to get that? I'm going back to the, um, 
going back to the uh, station. We'll get the long ladders way there. No time. No time. No, I, I no. bought the small uniform. I just didn't bring the long <laughs> <Yeah>. ladders. <laughs> So oh. anyway, it goes up there. It's got all the kit on and what. It's yeah. got its little ardour on and all that. It yeah. grabs. Uh, there was there was like a little person up there. Manages to grab that. Not a little. It. Who was up there then? It was just someone just a... that was just the right size for a monkey to be able to rescue, which is <laughs> handy. Because if it'd been anyone else, like a larger person or a family, we'd all be screwed. Yeah. No, I don't know about the size of it, but it's just the story saying how like uh, it was quite a big big monkey and that it was good at breaking down doors. Oh yeah. Uh, it was good at climbing into small spaces and oh, stuff yeah. like that. Anyway, but it it's, big, to... so it's big enough to carry a, a, a fully grown man, but small enough to climb through a, a, a cat flap. Yeah. Sure. So, uh, Which is handy. So anyway, it managed to, you know, Could get the person. Boots on as well. It got got the person and everything, and uh, now it says it, you know, it's sort of, uh, it's on call if if they ever need it again. <laughs> sure, and if they ever get anywhere again and they've forgotten the long letters, but there's plenty of grippage, they just call for Coco. <laughs> <laughs> so that's this week's monkey news. Bollocks. Well, I hope you enjoyed our... Our podcast, yeah, another half hour of absolute drivel. I've been Ricky Gervais, with me, Steve Merchant. See you next time. And Carl Pilkington. Uh -huh. And we'd all like to thank those brilliant guys at Positive Internet for hosting this podcast brilliantly. Positive Internet, hosting the world's number one podcast. Welcome to the seventh uh, Ricky Gervais show on the uh, podcast. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Now, talking of that, that's only five to go then, isn't it? Five to go in this series of twelve. Oh, still seems a lot though, doesn't it? We'll uh, we'll take a little break. I'm sure we'll come back through popular demand. I'm hoping. Yep. I'm hoping to put that on the poster back by popular demand. Well, I'm well. hoping it's by overwhelming public demand. Yeah, which is exactly. My favorite. Yeah, yeah. As we're doing it for nothing. Yeah. We, we want to get a little bit of a pat on the back. Don't <laughs> exactly. We? Please. Somebody. Um. Do they so, give awards out for podcasting? Oh, if they do. Hoo hoo. Hello. <laughs> I am already writing my speech, baby. <laughs> Um, and I was thinking that everyone listening, um, if you want to register, uh, your email with us, we'll let you know when we're back on air, maybe later in the year. Uh, go to rickygervais.com and just, um, register, and then when I do a general mail out, I'll let you all know when Carl Pilkington is back. You are a good guy to these people, Rick. No sweat. <laughs> now, there's been an awful lot of correspondence. Um, it's, I mean, it's, it's backing up there. We've got acres of it to get through. Um, it is a bit mental, actually, but it's very flattering, and, and thank you all. And people have uh, sent such brilliant things in and spent so much time doing them. There's someone sent in this uh, 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 mock-up of... We, we were talking about the um, those Russian sort of iconoclastic artefacts, and someone's mocked up Carl Pilkington as St. Carl the Bewildered. <laughs> it's it's brilliant. It's so good. Can we put those on the web? Yeah, I think let's put that up on um, rickygervais.com, and that's from uh, Joe Murray in Philadelphia. We've also got one, which is a little work of art from Ed Ferrari, and it's the three of us in a studio, and it, it's it's just great. It's a very flattering picture of you there, Rick. You look about 14. I know. I, I've come out very well in this. Carl... He's got a head like a fucking orange. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. And you, well, I don't know what you are. You, you, your foot, your your head is about two foot long, and in real life, it's only eighteen inches long, isn't it? <laughs> so he's exaggerated yours yeah. a little bit. But it's a lovely drawing. We put that up on the web as well. It's just uh, so uh, everyone go to rickygervais dot com. Everyone register, please, and we'll email you. And everyone um, uh, keep sending stuff in. So thank you very much, Carl. Joe from Bradford asks, what body parts can you live without? He wants to know. He's obviously having sleepless nights thinking about this. What? So, oh. <sighs> the, the, with the brain, <laughs> he's coped this far. <laughs> so the bits that I've got now, if I had to get rid of, yep. one of them, yep. what wouldn't I miss? Yes. Um. See, I, I did a bit of an experiment on this. Right. Brilliant. It's my job at home to to wash up. Right. Suzanne does. She things. gives you all the really big responsible ones. <laughs> yeah. she, she, she sort of like pays the bills and wires the house. And she go, you go, what can I do? And you can go, well, you can go and play with the worms in the garden. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so it's my job to, to wash up and that, right? And um, I thought to sort of make it interesting and stuff. Uh, I thought, I wonder if I can do it, right? If I didn't have any thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> and so what did you do? So I just sort you of sliced it. off your thumbs. I, I just sort of <laughs> held them in. And it's amazing how, like, it took me ages just having, like, that one thing gone. Well, it's part of our evolution, the opposable thumb. Basically, that's when we soared 
th- 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 these are milestones in human evolution. The opposable thumb, the, the forward-facing eyes, the upright. Th- these are these are massive things in in taking us out of the animal kingdom. And uh, one day, uh, Carl, you'll walk upright. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you mean about eyes facing forward? You mean before we got here, there was people who, uh, whose eyes were looking in the red. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. That. Is that what you no, know? No, no, because when we got sort of uh, uh, binocular vision, where um, uh, we could, we could, you know, because we were predators have a forward face. I'm, I'm going way back. I'm not just saying. I'm, I'm saying. I'm not saying chimps had eyes on the side of their head, but I'm saying big, big, major um, milestones in any evolution. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I lost your evolution. Yeah. I mean. So, uh, when you were doing this experiment, washing up, um, you say that you found it difficult, it took you ages. So, you, you, didn't, you didn't just give, give up once you realised how essential thumbs were. No, you I actually can't... washed up everything. I just think of Suzanne walking in and Carl's there, just covered in water and, and very liquid suds, standing on a pile of broken crockery. Yeah, lun- p- plunging his face into the sink every three, 30 seconds and just <laughs> swishing his head around. <laughs> But we talked about the the washing up thing before, I don't know, when uh, we stood there washing up, and um, I sort of look out out of out of a window, so the sinks in front of the window. Yeah. And that's why I quite like washing up because I can just look out onto the street, see people going past. There's like a local homeless fella called Franco, you know. I look out that like, he's all right and everything. Sure. But I was looking across the way, right, and there's some uh, sort of there's some Chinese people who live on in a flat, right, really small flat. And they're up till all hours. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> but they, they decide to back up at about half three in the morning. And that. They're always really noisy and that. But above them, there was some woman, right, who um, the sort of bedroom is on par to our kitchen, right? Yeah. So I'm sort of washing up. Yeah. And I sort of look across and see see this woman with, uh, like, you know, no no pants on and that, no, no bra on that. Naked. Yeah, just... That's the word you're looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah she's just wandering about, you know, on that. So I was like, oh, what's going on here? So I kept, carried on washing up and that, right? And uh, <laughs> kept looking, and then I was looking and she looked at me, right? So we made eye contact. <laughs> sure. So I was like, oh, God, right? So um, what I thought the best thing to do was, was sort of drop me pants a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> just just a little bit, just like, you know, I had boxer shorts on and that. I thought if I just show a little bit of little bit of sort of arse cheek, then it's kinda like, right, we we quits. Right? <laughs> I don't understand the thinking. <laughs> so so Suzanne's watching the telly, right? I think she was watching Sex in the City or something. Yeah. She sort of turns around to see how I'm getting on with the washing up, right? She sees me with like my pants sort of down a little bit with my arse out. She said, What are you doing? I said, Don't look now. I said, but there's a woman over the road, right, with no pants on and that. She caught me looking. I'm just giving her a bit back. <laughs> I love the fact that he explains the rules and Suzanne's meant to go, OK, <laughs> that makes sense. But I don't, so, so hang on, so you, you, you showed a bit of your arse. You turned, presumably, to show the arse. Or well, I just, the arse I, just, out the I had to lift it up a little bit on the, sort of, on the draining board. What, hang on, though, what, um, what did she do? Did you register her reaction when she saw a bit of your arse? What happened? When she saw my ass, yeah. well, then I wasn't looking because I thought, in a way, I don't want I don't want it to look like, well, I've seen a bit of your stuff, here's a bit of mine. <laughs> I just <laughs> thought, at the end of the day, I caught a glance of you. It's only fair. You've had a bit back. You know, I'm not you making see, a big I, deal out of I it. I genuinely think James Stewart missed a trick here in Rear Window. Yeah. This would have been, you know, a much better film had James Stewart just popped his pants down. It would have given a whole new meaning to the to the title Rear Window. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's tricky though. I seem to be surrounded by people like that. Because I've told you before, there's the old woman across the way who's just sat there reading a book. I, I look through everybody's windows like that. Uh, remember that film, that sliver, sliver or something? Okay, right. When, when they've got video cameras. Yeah. I'm just looking onto everybody's world and just seeing what people are getting up to. There's nothing wrong with that. Brilliant. That's why I like washing up. <laughs> The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Chris has emailed a mantra for Carl. We were talking about famous mantras and sayings and things. Yeah. Never has a mank said so much to so many that means so little. Brilliant. So you can have that on your uh, headstone. Rupert. Your little round headstone. 
<laughs> Rupert's in the Isle of Man. He says, I don't know if you knew this, Carl, but apparently octopuses' testicles are located in their heads. Yeah. But then, to me, that isn't that, that amazing, because at the end of the day, an octopus, really, all it is is an head. <laughs> <laughs> So everything it's got has to be it in the head. It has to be in the head. It looked daft if they dangled down below. <laughs> right? So what, all it is is... I mean, there's a lot Hang of on, facts. It, it, it looked daft if they dangled down below. There's, I'm wondering again, that's almost... I don't think you should start sending them in, but that could almost be the B-side to... Uh, B-side to Knob at Night. I could eat a Knob at Night. James Round says, Carl, if you could be anyone in the world, who would it be? Uh. Dead or alive? Why would you choose to be a dead person? <laughs> no, but but sometimes like there's people who, who are now now dead, but everybody raves about them. Like but you. but are you saying? But he he wants you to to live that life, not have been that person. Are you saying that if you chose Napoleon, you'd be Napoleon, but he'd be back to life, um, uh, walking around now on the bus, or he he. You know, it'd be the the eighteenth century or what? What are you saying? I'm, I'm, what what I mean is, if I'll just answer the question: Who would you be and why? It's someone you no, admire no. or you think had a good life? But, just answer the question. But what I mean is, it's good to be remembered, like Winston Churchill is remembered yeah. as being a decent bloke. But I wouldn't want the asshole that he had. So I don't want to live his life. Right. But it's good to be. You'd like to be Winston Churchill, but you'd like to have a paper round <laughs> instead of uh, uh, saving the world. Yeah. Well, that's that's what I mean. But is he saying who would want whose job would oh, I want to take on? It's not that complicated. The question is this: If he could be anyone in the world, who would Carl be? That's the question. That's all the information I've got. A lot of responsibility on a lot of jobs, isn't there? So, some of the names flowing through your head now. Um, I was thinking um, Bruce Willis. <laughs> <laughs> I never expected that. I never expected that. <laughs> so when he, what? So his responsibility in your mind is what? Saving uh, people who are trapped in a building with terrorists? Well, yeah, may, maybe you know, his his worries are different worries, with you know people who have a lot of money, come other worries. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So Bruce Willis, he's always going on these marches, isn't he, saying stop war and all that, I mainly because he's got, you know, he's got more more to lose if there's a war. He's got loads of houses. One of them's going to get damaged. <laughs> Whereas if you're poor. You've got the one house, if there's a war, it's like, oh, just end it all for me then, I'm sick of it anyway. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Sure. So with, Whereas with, Bruce, yeah. With, with, with successful life and happy life, there's more for you to lose, is what I'm saying. Right. Like, at the moment, because I've, I've, I've finished a job that's, uh, that I've been at for ten years, right? I've finished working there, so suddenly I've got, me, my timetable's a bit out, and I haven't got enough of a routine, and I, I'm a man who likes to know what I'm doing. Right? Yeah. So now suddenly five I, until seven, washing up with no thumbs. <laughs> I, I like, I like. I, I've sort of turned into like an old person, where the little jobs that you shouldn't enjoy are now the main event. So but I, hold on, how old are you? You're thirty-one, aren't you? Thirty-two. Thirty-two, and you're pottering around, <laughs> not knowing what to do with yourself. Well, like yesterday, Suzanne shoes needed uh, to go to the cobblers, right? <laughs> The word cobbler. I didn't even know cobblers still existed. I only ever see that in Christmas films made by Disney. Well, I had to go and do that, and that suddenly. Because last time, last time you were going to the toffee shop. <laughs> yeah. And now you're going to the cobblers. Next week is the candlestick maker. <laughs> but all, all I mean is that suddenly is a nice little day out. I'm sort of putting my coat on, going right. I'll go and go and see the cobbler now yeah. and go and have a chat. Tell me about the cobbler. You didn't come back with three magic beans, did you? <laughs> no, the, the cobbler's cobbler's all right. He's you know he's doing you know he's fixing cobbling. shoes and that. He's cobbling. Um, he's cobbling all day. Have I told you about uh, my uncle Alf, who was a cobbler? No. I'm sure I told you about him. He's, he's the one who um, he lived in like a, a bed sit, and he had two tellies. <laughs> he had he had like one that that the sound didn't work on, oh, and right. one that the picture didn't. But both together, <laughs> it worked. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. So as long as he was watching the right the same channel on both, sound came out of one telly, and he'd watch the picture on the other. Brilliant. And he slept in like a, a rubber dinghy, right? <laughs> but but he was. He Whoa! Was, you can't just let that slide. Why did you sleep in a rubber dinghy? He, he just liked boats and stuff, and uh, he sort of. <laughs> yeah, I like boats, but they're better on the water. Beds are better to sleep on. 
boats are better to sail on. Well, he just he just had it in there. It's a bed set. It was really tight space. Boat set. He's got this. He's got he's this. Moved into uh, a dinghy set. He's got this dinghy. So he's thinking, well, rather than it getting away, I might as well use it. Yeah. Right? But he was a he was a cobbler, <laughs> and he he used to like repair like my shoes and that. Right. Yeah. But he'd always sort of overdo them. Right. So, <laughs> what do you mean? Like, um, <laughs> fancy. Uh, do you know, like, pimp my ride on MTV? Yeah. Because he does up shoes, he'd go mental on them. What do you mean? There was a the stereo. Yeah. Well, no. There was it, horns. It, it, it's like. <laughs> Here Goes comes Carl stripes down yeah, the yeah. Here comes Mr. Pilkington. He's yeah. got the fastest shoes in the land. No, it, it just makes shoes that would last forever. So instead of putting like one sole on, he'd put about five on. So you, it looked like one of them built-up shoes <laughs> that you never see. It just put loads of stuff on. They'd last forever, but they did. But they look like orthopedic shoes. Yeah, yeah. It just like the, suddenly I, I was like six foot seven. <laughs> whenever he'd sort of sorted my shoes out, but he's he's a cobbler, and you know it's work. That's that's always always there for you, isn't it? I uh, suppose so. So you went out with to 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 to, to take uh, Suzanne's shoes to the cobbler. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah. So I just took them to the cobblers and that, and that that was a, like a nice little job for the day. Um, I got a leaflet through the door saying, you know, if you want to walk a dog, you know, the the rates are good. I don't know what they what they pay in that, but I got a little letter in my little letterbox saying, you know, if you if you're free in the day, what they, they pay you to walk pay, a dog, they pay you to walk a dog and that. And I thought if I do that and get a paper round, two in one. Sorry, you just went from a job 